Transforming the Culture of Education, Improving Teacher Working Conditions is a co-production of Regional Educational Laboratory Midwest and Detroit Public Television, with funding provided by RHEL Midwest, through funds provided by the U.S. Department of Education's Institute of Education Sciences. I think teachers want to be in a culture and an environment that supports continuous learning and allows them to get better at, at helping their students. So when you come into a place that's colorful and the people are smiling and you feel confident, it makes you want to come to work and feel good about it. I think that school leadership, teacher leadership, and professional development are three key components to building a successful school. When you feel like a leader, you feel like you can make changes, you can have a voice, you can do bigger things. Regional Educational Laboratory around Midwest builds partnerships between the states, local school districts, and other local education stakeholders. One of Michigan Department of Education's key objectives is to have a qualified teacher in every classroom to ensure that the supply and demand of teachers in the state is aligned with the needs of local schools and districts. Most teachers, when they leave the school, they're leaving because something wasn't provided for them. So improving teacher leadership and school leadership, making sure teachers have what they need with the professional development, having those adequate resources, making sure their concerns are heard. There's been lots of studies that looked at these working conditions for teachers. And those favorable working conditions are associated with favorable teacher outcomes. One of those outcomes that's really important is teacher retention. And we know without good teacher attention, it's really difficult to achieve good teaching and learning. We also know from research that um, every year that a student is in a classroom experiencing um, learning uh, from an excellent teacher, a well-trained and supported teacher, that affects them for the rest of their lives, basically. So investments in teaching and leadership make a profound difference. At the end of the day, the district is going to be it will only be as good as it's able to develop teachers and leaders who can address the demands of the profession. And people need to feel celebrated. They need to feel supported. Basically, you want to feel comfortable where you are. You have all the proper resources that you need to be able to make sure that you are giving your students all the information that they need to be successful, and as well as being um, confident within ourselves to be able to come to school prepared and having everything that we need to have in place. So I started off at like 22, a, you know, fresh out of college, as a lot of these new teachers are, and really excited to work with kids and then I can vividly remember thinking what am I doing and I remember one of the teachers that was on the team saying well have you checked the manual and I was like there's a manual are you kidding me I look back on that now and think like what are we doing if we're not doing better than that and that's where I fell in love with the research behind teaching and what it looks like to be a better teacher and challenge myself in the classroom when I became a principal I really brought that background to this role and recognized that my job as a building leader was going to be to create those opportunities for new teachers and for old teachers. According to the research, principals have a profound influence on teacher recruitment and retention. So if we're talking about improving uh, teacher working conditions, whether that's the professional development or evaluation of a teacher um, in a classroom. School principals and other administrators in the building are the ones that will be doing the work. When it comes to a school leader, you want someone who is a dynamic visionary. And Visker, of course, we are an urban school community. And so with that, it's very important to have a school leader that focuses on transforming the school culture and transforming our school into a successful school. 
School leaders have the responsibility to work with individual teachers to improve their instructional practices, and that reinforces equity in the school. I'm just going to be honest. Um, when you're dealing with the partnership school and dealing with a school community that focuses on meeting students where they are, you do have challenges with uh, teacher retention. And I'm just being transparent. And the reason being is that the workload is so heavy, but the impact is so great. And so we want to make sure that we foster an understanding for those who are coming in. It means looking at data with teachers and engaging them in conversations about uh, which students are thriving and which students are not. Uh, which types of students um, in terms of their demographics are uh, moving forward in the school and which ones are not. And then most importantly, how can we help those students uh, who may not be thriving to do better? And I think there's been this real shift over the past several years, having the school leader be really more steeped in thinking about setting a vision for what education and, and, and learning and the curriculum is gonna look like in my school and then implementing strategies and practices that support that. We want to follow your vision and your goals, and we want to feel confident in doing that. Principals are partially responsible for social and emotional support for teachers as well. Teachers need to feel safe so that they can feel comfortable with learning and exploring in our learning environment. And so I think that that's critical when it comes to managing a school culture and climate is really making sure that they feel safe and secure in the environment that they're in. She has to be transparent and honest with open communication, especially coming to our, our district, because if you come to somewhere that you think it's glamour and glitters and gold, and you don't receive that, you're gonna be kind of upset, and so you're not gonna be able to retain that teacher. But once you know that, and then you know that you're gonna be supported, and you're gonna wanna be able to stay. We, through the interview process, are trying to be as transparent as we can about what the challenges are. But then what does the school environment have to look like? In every building that we have, we have a calming room for students. But we've also converted the teachers' lounges. We have replaced the lunch table with reclining chairs. It's a, a zen-like, yoga-like environment that when they walk in, we want you to be able to relax. You can't pour from an empty glass. And so our building level leadership, the teacher leadership, the expanded leadership team supports mindfulness. They do check-ins with us just to see if we are okay. What's going on? Is there anything going on at home? Or is there anything I can do to assist you? If we're going to hang on to principals and encourage them to do their work to improve teacher working conditions, it's important that we recognize that leadership is a team effort. Uh, and central office administrators uh, play an important role in that. You have to build and cultivate, you know, leadership in your building so that you don't have to be left with trying to do it all by yourself. And so, and that creates buy-in, that creates ownership for our teachers. The advice I would give a school leader is just being transparent, having an open line of communication. Communication is key um, with your teacher leaders as well as your staff. Asking your staff, oh, what do you need? Um, is there professional development I can get for you or provide to help you become a better teacher? I originally was thinking maybe going to become a principal, and then I kind of shifted to reading specialist and found that really is a leadership role to be a reading specialist. And so then I was able to work while I was a reading specialist in another district kind of as a coach and really work with the, the students part of the time, but also with the teachers and just start helping teachers to see how to be more practitioners and more diagnostic. And so that was just really rewarding to see, like I could do more than just help my set of kids that I'm assigned to for the year, but I can actually help other teachers to do the same thing for their kids. And then you have more of a systemic benefit. One thing that certainly we need in this time um, is serious dialogue about our own work, about our own biases, uh, and how we can support kids in, in new and different ways. Who is leading that charge? It's teacher leaders within the school um, who are in touch with the community, who are in touch with kids, and understand the challenges that families are going through.
At Public Impact, we feel like the teacher profession is in a bit of a crisis when it comes to both attracting teachers into the profession and retaining them. And so it's our belief that unless we're able to create strong pathways within teaching, we won't be able to retain them once they're in the profession. So it's teacher leadership to us feels like a vital part of the future of the education profession. I feel like when teachers have autonomy to make decisions, be respected and listened to by their leaders and have the ability to have their ideas funded and bring those ideas to fruition, that makes people want to stay. I think that's a really important piece with obviously with teacher retention to just have that like feeling of being part of a team and having an opportunity to be a leader. We know that teachers who have uh, leadership opportunities oftentimes um, actually are better inclined to stay in school. And we also know that teachers learn better from other teachers. In part because of the, uh, the Board of Professional Teaching Standards, we're building a pipeline for teacher leadership that has allowed teachers to remain in the classroom and continue to work so that they have the opportunity to influence the next generation of teachers who are coming into the building. The role itself is basically, you're still going to be a part-time teacher, but a lot of your job responsibilities have to do with supporting a team of teachers in the building through embedded professional development, coaching, modeling, co-teaching, those kind of activities. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you're responsible for the growth of all the students on your team. So not only the students you directly teach, but also the students you support through your team teachers. I teach math. I may model a strategy for my mentee to help her service her students. I may give suggestions on how to, to differentiate instruction so they can help their students to close that achievement gap. I think it really just creates a positive attitude and a supportive system. So for a new teacher, whether they're new in their career or just new to our school, it really feels like I can do this, I'm not alone. Any new teacher's like, yay, you know, this is so helpful because I need all the help I can get because we're just like surviving sometimes. As a teacher leader myself, it's very imperative that I reach out to the teachers who need that extra help to let them know that I'm here from them and to make sure that they're receiving the proper education and the equipment that they need to be successful. In schools, there are informal and formal leadership opportunities that principals can provide. In terms of informal leadership, I think it's public recognition of experience um, and excellence that, uh, that the principal can do. Formal teacher leadership, of course, is a position within a school and it's recognized and paid for. Well, having teacher leaders is really helpful because it's not possible for our you know, administration to be everywhere at once, but we can pass this information along. So it really provides a, kind of that sense of network. Like you have this group where we're all kind of working in this together. So it just gives everybody a voice. I think it also ensures clear expectations from administration we have. Um, to be able to make sure everyone's on the same page, bring our grade level together as a team so that each individual class isn't an isolated class. Every grade level has a voice and we're trying to bring that all back to be able to make those decisions to support everyone. Principals are responsible for making that system work. So how do they do that? Uh, they engage teacher leaders. So when you talk about teacher leaders, you're looking at teachers who are dynamic in their craft. And so it's important for school leaders to build those teacher leaders and make sure that they have the support and the guidance that they need so that we can maximize our learning experiences for our students. We work with districts to help um, sort of uncover those competencies, things like achievement drive and impact and influence and persistence and all these things that help people be successful when they're on the ground working with their teams. So improving the selection process is a very quick, easy way for schools to improve their teacher leadership work. Our principal, Mrs. German, she sees the leadership in amongst her staff. Once she sees that, she kind of um, pros them to do a little bit more. In the um, very first day of school, teachers can join different committees. For instance, I'm a, a chair on a committee. I'm a co-chair. Um, so she gets, the, gets everybody involved to be on some type of, of committee. 
we really encourage teacher leaders to be very data focused. And so one of the other aspects of getting the job is that they're able to prove that they can collect data, use data, analyze data. And so with the support of the school leader, um, they're constantly sort of making sure that if they're moving kids, they're moving all kids and that equity is a part of that work. My responsibilities as being a teacher leader is to make sure that I am staying abreast on the best practices, that I am supporting my um, teachers in my grade level, being able to make sure that I'm reaching my deadlines, as well as keeping um, the principal abreast of what's going on and making sure that we're increasing the student achievement. I think the first data that we always look at is this equity lens of like, are we distributing our teacher leaders in a way that we're reaching all students, particularly students whose needs haven't been well served? And so when it comes to teacher leadership and how it will um, impact student success is great. We were ranked um, low in student performance in the past, but putting those different components in place, building teacher capacity and making sure that they are prepared for our, um, our learners and, and seeing student success skyrocket. I think all of those things has helped us tremendously. I'm the superintendent of the River Rouge School District. I'm a child of poverty. And so we all went into schools that were in low income communities. And my personal experience, I was a gifted student, but my friends weren't. And so I watched how the teachers treated them. They weren't bad kids, but they were coming from homes that just could not provide them with the basics. And so they were misunderstood. And so the reason I went into education was because I said that there were a lot of young boys and girls who didn't have an opportunity because the luck of the draw. I couldn't wait to become a teacher because I said I'd get 30 students an hour who I have the opportunity to shape and mold. Then I said I need something bigger so I can't wait to become a principal because now I get a building. And once that happened, the natural you know, order of things was I can't wait to become a superintendent so we can create those conditions for children to, to excel, that regardless to their birthright or namesake, you'll be given an opportunity because we're gonna provide you with a highly skilled workforce that is committed to seeing you get better because they themselves are committed to getting better. Teachers who remain in the profession for a long time, research indicates, have continued to learn and have continued to engage in professional development and question their practice and begin to ask questions about which kids they're serving best and how can they grow. There's a big body of research that shows how professional learning can impact student outcomes and teacher practice. Professional development is key for all stakeholders that we have in our building. So there's a lot of thinking and research that we can bring to bear uh, in school systems around what kind of content expertise we can build and, and, and grow in the teacher uh, workforce. But there's also this other piece of it around adult learning and like how people get better at getting better and how we can help school systems uh, design and implement teacher professional development that we know is structured in a way that where the learning will stick with the adult and where we know that it will grow their capacity and it can be sustained in a way that they can use it in the classroom. That is the types of conversations that we're having as principals and teachers together for the betterment of our kids. Doing uh, job embedded professional development where principals are sitting with teachers, looking at data and providing ideas and tips and tools and research to advance the teacher's instructional practice. There is a lot of professional development out there that's routine and sort of um, sit and get and one shot workshops. We've all heard uh, about these and, and the research shows that in, in large part, those don't work for lots of reasons. So we try and think about how we can take uh, research and lessons learned um, from the field uh, into other systems to implement professional development that is more aligned with what we know works and helps uh, learning happen and be sustained. Professional learning should really be focused on the why and the how. So what are the reasons behind this professional learning? Why do we need to learn this? And then how do you do it? Um, so just really following those pieces and then having an opportunity to practice that in their classrooms and use that material. It's professional development that's geared towards 
our students, something that I can take back into the classroom and it's going to help my, my kids be successful. For example, with the different levels of learning with our kids, it's important that, that I differentiate instruction. So having that type of training will help me take it back into the classroom and help me close those achievement gaps with my children. We definitely want to meet our students where they are. And in our district, that's what we exactly that we do. We have professional developments that's geared to our students with social emotional learning. That if you're not designing professional learning to support teachers to get at some of these things, it's going to be hard for them to move the needle on like persistent problems of practice. Two years ago, we started to implement a little bit of choose your own PD. And we, I would share out a Google Doc and let teachers basically write in there, like, this is what I need. This is what I I'm struggling with right now. We've really been working hard to bring the PD just here. We have some really smart people. How can we use each other to build our own experts? Probably the best one I've ever seen, like professional development wise, um, are classroom learning labs. Classroom learning lab really provides a really powerful opportunity to um, invite teachers to have other teachers come to their classrooms, observe, and ask questions and do a lot of reflecting and having reflecting conversations so that teachers can can kind of grow from each other's practices. And it kind of reminds me of when you're a doctor, right? And you're in the surgical theater, right? You're down below and other doctors are up above and they're watching you through that window and they're learning and they're growing. That's exactly what a classroom learning lab offers for our teachers. Anytime we've done classroom learning labs, uh, the teachers just say, oh my gosh, this was the best professional development experience I've, I've ever gone through. Um, not only the people that are the lead teachers at that time, but the participants that are coming in and watching everything from the pre-meeting to the execution of the class time of, of the learning lab uh, to the debriefing session afterwards. Everybody just gets, uh, gets an awful lot of things they get to take away from that. And teachers are just excited. You know, it answered a problem that we had. And we also do surveys after our professional development. And so, you know, part of that will be talking about what went well, what they liked of that, and then talking about what they'd like to see in the future. And so really to be able to take that survey from them and look at what that need is for, for the future has helped develop those pieces too. So I feel like that's my role is to make sure that happens. We do have um, perception surveys of our um, teachers. We use that as a process to gain understanding of what professional development that they need. And so then once we go through progress monitoring and observations, we can see, is this really working? You know, what other uh, challenges are our teachers having? What can we improve on? And that helps us in, in making decisions for future professional learning, as well as giving our teachers more support. Advice to improve professional development for district and school leaders would be really taking the time up front to isolate where your students and staff need to improve. And, and it's okay for it to be a really specific thing um, as long as you feel confident that this is the root cause of why my kids aren't advancing and really paying attention to those, those new teachers. They get assignments that are the highest need and they are the least prepared for. So thinking about how you can really double down on professional learning for new teachers in high needs classrooms. I think COVID-19 has really rattled our world in a big way. It's definitely impacted everyone, and education, you know, is not exempt from that. I think we've really uh, shocked the education system in a lot of ways, and teachers are responding to the, those shocks, uh, but it's an extremely uh, stressful time. Having a really strong teacher leader in place with a relatively small team to support, we've seen in our work in the spring was really, really important. So they had sort of a lifeline to reach out to as they were moving towards remote education to try to work with the teacher leader around how they were going to do that and continue the excellent instructional practices that they had done before. Opportunity to collaborate is probably even more important than it has been before so the teachers can learn from one another how they're tackling these difficult times and what they're doing to help one another and to help their students. We do a lot of meeting and planning all together. 
So that allows them to, you know, share their concerns and offer pushback. Knowing that they're concerned about you and they're doing a check-in just to see how you're feeling, how's it going? Do you need any help with this? What can I get you? Though it just helps with the day and helps make it my job easier. Our focus countywide was actually on that social emotional piece and really being super mindful of that work. So we were learning from a psychologist on really how to welcome our students back and to be a support for them and helping our students cope with that and just being that kind of love and support. When teachers leave, it has a negative impact on students who are left behind because there is no continuity. The other negative consequence of that is that Teachers who are left behind are left to maybe having to deal with greater workload or they have, you know, to pick up extra responsibilities outside of their classroom. It's important to have a, a vision for your school. Key components to building a successful school is having a great school leader that is the visionary, but also having great teacher leaders that can actually support the um, school leader's vision and be able to support our staff and be creative inside the classroom, as well as the professional development that is in place for all stakeholders. Making sure that we value the people that we work with and that work for us and work with us and making sure that you value those people because everybody brings something wonderful to the table, whether it's a student or a teacher or a support staff member, you name it, bring some something that's crucial to our district. Transforming the culture of education, improving teacher working conditions, is a co-production of Regional Educational Laboratory Midwest and Detroit Public Television with funding provided by RHEL Midwest, through funds provided by the U.S. Department of Education's Institute of Education Sciences.